All right, everybody, we got a special edition today of Green with Envy. Joining us in the podcast today, very special guest, Jason Tatum's high school coach, head coach at Chaminade College Preparatory. We have Coach Frank Bennett in the building. Time to stop messing around. This is Green with Envy. Let's lock in. What up, what up, what up? Welcome into another edition of Green with Envy. As always, it's your boy Will. We are checking in. And today, we don't have time to mess around with the full intro. This is your boy Will. We are. I'm rocking with my best friend, co-host, and our coach of the podcast, Greg Meninkas. Although, I don't know if I can really call him that today. As today, we are joined by our special guest, Jason Tatum's high school coach, the head coach at Chaminade College Preparatory in St. Louis. Coach Frank Bennett is here. Coach, appreciate you being here with us today. Appreciate you all. Thanks for having me, fellas. Yeah, man. Excited to have you on the show today. I, I want to get into it, and I want to start here. L let me ask you this. How old was Jason Tatum the first time that you met him? Oh, he was in he was in middle school. Um, I, I went to I went to church with his with his grandmother, and and um, so I knew I knew Jason at a at a young age. Okay, so you've had a relationship with him for for quite a while now. I mean, he's only he's only twenty six, but it's quite a while when you look at it <laughs> when he's only twenty six right. from middle that's school right. to that age. So let's start here because I think one of the biggest narratives we're recording this the uh, day after Game Two of the Eastern Conference Finals, and you know one of the biggest off and on storylines is kind of how Jason is portrayed in the media and how the media examines or at times you could say even over examines Jason's game or the expectations that have been put on Jason Tatum so I'm curious as someone that's known him from a middle schooler seeing his development coached him saw him win Gatorade player of the year go to Duke be the top recruit number three pick so on and so forth all the accolades that have come with it what is it like from your perspective when you're seeing all of these different angles about Jason Tatum that are that are coming out through the media? What is that like from your perspective? Uh, I mean, to be honest with you, Will, it's it's um, it's pretty gratifying just because when you look at the way Jason conducts himself as a professional, um, he's just that in every sense of the world, you know. And so when you look at how he conducted himself here at Chaminade, how he conducted himself at Duke, and now as a pro. Um, He's your consummate professional. I mean, he he treats he treats his craft um, like um, like anyone should, and as a result, you're starting to see um, what I believe is one of the all time greats right right in the right right in front of us. Um, and and I think his accolades show that. And so um, it's fun watching him, you know, trying to continue to climb that mountaintop and get to you know banner banner number eighteen for the Celtics. You know, I think that that's the one the one. Um, accolade that's that's still kind of hanging out there and you know with all things being considered i think he'll get it this year what are you most proud of um for, from jason uh at this point in his career what's the one thing that really stands out where you're like it brings a smile to your face every time you, you think about it so you know jason has all all of the all of the things that any basketball player would want he's got he's got you know the height he's got the athleticism he's got the reach you know, he's got the skills, but what a lot of people don't realize about Jason is the fact that his, his work ethic is, is, prof is, is literally professional. And so I state that just because, um, you know, I, I, when I was able to, I was very fortunate to go up and watch a few training camp practices and, and, you know, he's, he's the first one to the gym before practice to get his left in and he sticks around and gets his, you know, gets his, um, gets his shots up afterwards or vice versa. And these were the same things that he was doing back in high school. And so, so when you look at that, you know, Jason has been following the same blueprint for, for years now. Um, and so, um, you know, with the advent of social media and, and, and it's, and it's um, fueling of, you know, the microwave society of we need to get things right now um, in the background, Jason's been, been, been working you know, he's been working for, for, for years at, at this goal, you know, at this accomplishment. Um, and so that's what I'm most proud of in a, in a day and age where, where it's, you know, what, you know, what can I get now? Uh, you know, Jason has been up at 4 30, 5 AM getting work, multiple workouts a day, you know, aside from the team practices to make sure he's as good as he possibly can be. So he can accomplish everything that, 
that he he sets foot to to accomplish. So can that's what I'm most proud of. Can you talk to us a little bit about you know you said that he's been doing this since high school. Tell us a little bit about Jason Tatum as you know because in in high school he, he's the number one recruit right he's the top yes. recruit he's gay, great all American you know every accolade that, that you can think of. So tell us a little bit about what it was like having him on campus when when he's in high school and even maybe what some of his his leadership might have been what his style might have been back in high school. Yeah, I mean, J- Jason is that is 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 hungry, and and he's been like that since since I've known him. You know, he's always been working towards this goal of of, of being an NBA basketball player, and so every decision, everything that he's done, has been funneled down towards to, towards that goal. And so, you know, get, again, like this is some of the things that high schoolers and and people don't don't really get to see on the outside, and I've been fortunate to see. You know, there'll be days that I, I got to I got to school at at 6 a.m. or 5:30 a.m. to open the gym up for him to get a workout in, and that's and that's the day of a game or a day of a practice. So, so he would he would go he would have his his workout in the morning, go through a full school day, and then we would practice after school, and then he would stick around for another an, another workout, and then might even lift after that workout. And so these are these are things that. Um, they sound they sound really they sound fun and great in the moment, but when you compound these 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 instances, which which he's done, um, you get some you get someone who's who's very special both physically for, as far as what he's gifted uh, gifted in doing, but also but also mentally because he understands what it takes, um, and so so that's that's my that's the thing that I'm most proud of, and the thing that um, when you talk about leadership, you know it's. It's those habits that that um, you know our high school program today. It's just something that we do now, you know. And and the kids don't understand that it really stemmed from 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 Jason and his desire to be where he's at now. And so now it's just it's just the Chaminade basketball way of 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 being a great basketball player. You know, the kids on our on our team this year uh, they have no clue you know, outside of me telling them, but they have no, no tangible clue that it came from, you know, the, the way that Jason approached, approached the the game of basketball. And so nowadays it's just what we do. And then when you look at his impact around, around campus, um, you know, he was in town uh, for, you know, for 24 hours, one day during our season uh, this past year. And he popped in and, and he talked to the guys for about two hours. You know, that's unprovoked. Unpro- you know, I didn't call him up and say, hey, can you come in and talk to the guys? Um, he always keeps tabs on the program and he wants our, our program to be successful. So he popped in and talked to the guys and um, and was very gracious of his time. So his leadership um, obviously is is very important to the to the Celtics. But but it stems all the way back to to his younger days at Chaminade. It's funny, I texted my high school coach who actually runs the basketball program that Deuce is a part of in um, in Boston. Um, so his name is Brendan Smith. Shout out a step ahead. And I asked him, I was like, what's a, a question that you would want me to ask Coach Frank? And he said he wanted you to talk about his Tatum's leadership style, if he's a vocal leader or leader by example. And it sounds like you just answered that. Definitely leads by example. But you were just talking about how, like, Shamanad now has a certain ethos about the program. Mm-hmm. And our um, connection for this pod, our, our friend Bridget Kelly, um, I, I was texting her this morning. Yeah, yes. And um, I asked her, I said, what, what's something that you think we should talk about with Coach? And she said, definitely talk about St. Louis basketball. So one thing I wanted to to ask you is when you think of players from certain areas, there's like a certain certain ethos that comes with that region of the country, right? Like New York, you think of the point guards that are super crafty and super physical. So is there an ethos of St. Louis basketball and how do you see that manifesting in Jason's game? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's an ethos of of it sounds um, kind of simplistic, but it's getting getting it out of the mud. You know, we're. You know, you if you if you're in the basketball landscape, obviously you have your New Yorks, your Chicago's, you know, your West Coast, and you got all these different areas of the of the country where where basketball is is um, at the forefront. And and so us out of St. Louis, we you know we believe we're just as good as anybody in the country, and we've got the the track record to prove it. Um, but but we also have this this pride of, of the fact that, you know, we're, you know, we got to get it out of the mud because we don't get as much of the, the limelight or the, 
attention that some of these other larger markets get. And and I understand that, but it's also it's also what what fuels some of our guys. And like you like you shouted out your your high school coach. You know we've 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 got a, a ton of guys that have come through the ranks in the St. Louis area. Some from our own high school that that I need to give shouts out shout outs just so just so people understand who who've come through the area. You know we've from our high school alone we've had you know David Lee, you know Bradley Beal, um, Tyler Cook who spent some time in the NBA who's who's working on our gym right now. Uh, but then when you when you when you take it a little bit to you know broader than that, you got your you know Jahadi White, you got your Larry Hughes, you know you know Chris Carowells. Um, you know, and and you know, I'm not even going to go back to some of the some of the older guys that have that have that have come through, but but we've we've got guys that have you know your Darius Miles, um, you know your Patrick McCall's. We've got plenty of guys that have that have quote unquote got out of the mud from this area, and so there's an immense amount of pride that comes from from being from St. Louis, and and you know getting you know you know getting to it with with the nation's best. Yeah, and. and- Coach, correct me if I'm wrong here. You played with David Lee at Chaminade, correct? I, I did. Yes, I did. Right. So what did you take from that experience playing with a guy who goes on to play in the NBA? David Lee made a couple all-star teams. Mm-hmm. So how did you take that time playing with a guy at that level and then translating that to your coaching approach? Then when you started to get guys like Bradley Beal, eventually Jason Tatum, and now you've developed all these other D1 players. What did you learn from your playing days that you then associated to your coaching style? The the that's a great question. The guys like that day like Dave and the the the, the special ones, um, first and foremost, they they're they're serious about the game of basketball. You know, they're not they're not casual fans. They're not Hollywood guys. They're not guys that love all the stuff that you know. We talk to our guys, you know, about um, do you love basketball or do you love what basketball brings you? You know, we're talking about guys that if if the gym was closed, no cameras, and you were playing. Like that would be their that would be their championship. You're gonna feel like you're playing in a in a. You're gonna feel like it, it means everything to them because with those guys, um, that's how that's how it fe- that's how it feels. Um, Bradley Beal was the same way. I mean, just a doggy competitor guy, competitive guy. Um, but going back to my playing days with, with Dave, Dave was the same exact way. And and um, when you see that 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 type of guy who is ultra competitive and also a great teammate. Um, it starts to open your your eyes up to the greater game of basketball, like the, the national scene. And so, um, being fortunate to play in a lot in, in a lot of high level showcases with with Dave, um, you just to see you just begin to see how big the game of basketball actually is. And and it's not only about the X's and O's. And the X's and O's are important, no doubt. Um, but the relationship side, the connection side. Um, the mental side of things, the preparation side of things, all of these different things that um, you get to see just because of of a guy like um, like Dave, it, it just it just fuels your own personal pursuits. Now being able to come back as a coach, you take all of these these lessons that you've learned and you and you apply it to your your guys because these guys need to shoot for the stars. They need to dream big. They need to um, envision themselves playing for you know, the Boston Celtics and, and, you know, who's to say they can't, um, mm-hmm. especially if you're able to tool, the, you know, to equip them with these lessons from these other greats. And to be very, to be very honest with you, these, these greats want to see them accomplish their goals. They want to see them playing side by side with them, you know, because at the end of the day, this, this basketball, uh, this game of basketball is a, it's a fraternity, you know, the coaching is a fraternity and um, the NBA players are, you know, they're a fraternity of their own right. So they have a vested interest in in trying to get the younger generation to understand what it takes and to help them accomplish their goals. So there's a lot to take, Will. You know, there's a lot to take from from uh, being around guys like that um, and trying to pay it forward to the younger generation. So one of the things that I want to I want to just jump in on that you said is that these guys weren't Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. Now that was then. Jason Tatum now, I don't know if you can say he's not Hollywood now, because every time I have my TV on, he's got a SoFi commercial, he's got a Ruffles sure. commercial, he's got a Subway commercial. Sure. What would be uh, what would be your assessment of Jason Tatum, the Hollywood, the actor? What would be your assessment of his <laughs> present day? Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, and here here's where here's why I say he's not Hollywood, right? Because um, at the end of the day, you if if you if you watch and see how he plays and how he works at his craft. 
Um, Jason loves basketball. Yeah. And Jason isn't about everything that comes with basketball at, at his, at his core that that man loves basketball. He, he's a competitor. He wants to, he wants to win a chip. I guarantee you um, the only thing he's focused on right now is banner number 18 for Um, so with that being said, um, that's the side of things where, especially when you look at the professional landscape, you're talking about guys that have unlimited resources. They've got all the money in the world. They have, they want, want to have access to, and, and it's very easy to get deviated from, you know, it's very easy for the, the main thing to, to not become the main thing. And, and that's, and, and. And Jason is the type of guy who's who's going to forever keep the main thing the main thing. Now, when you start talking about these these SoFi commercials and everything else, uh, now we we got to be smart about it too, right? I mean, you know, he's he's got to he's got to take advantage of of the of the opportunities presented to him because he's got a small window of of opportunity to make to make money for him and his family and his and his and his uh, family legacy. Um, so he has to take advantage of all these opportunities, right? Um, but at his core, you know, Jason is keeping the main thing the main thing. He is he is about winning. He's about competing. He's about hanging a banner in that gym. Now, you you mentioned about the – I'm going to circle back to the, the idea of getting it out the mud. Um, and you've talked a lot about Tatum's work ethic and how he's always going to put in the time to make sure that he's prepared for the big moments, right? Now, I don't know how much you've been tuned in to the current media coverage, both locally and nationally of Jason Tatum, but it does seem like um, because he's had so much success so early in his career, the expectations are like NBA finals, MVP, 35, 12, and six a game, or else he's not the guy we thought he was, right? What do you what would you say to the media, the current media criticisms that Jason Tatum is for a, a lot of people have said that he isn't mentally strong, he's not a leader and all this stuff. What would you say to the media if you were on like a first take or something like that? Uh you know, Greg, forgive me. I think I cut out for just a second. Do you mind restating that question for me? I just, yeah, so I just caught it, the back end. No, no, it's, it's all good. So with the media coverage of Tatum right now, it's mostly negative. So, like, what would you say to the media that says Jason Tatum isn't mentally strong enough and isn't a, a NBA Finals type player um, right now in his career? Yeah, I mean, heavy is the head that wears a crown, man. Like, that's what it boils down to. I mean, you're looking at a guy who's, I mean, when you look at his overall overall career thus far, he's. He's been to the Eastern Conference Finals uh, five times. I mean, he's a, he's a three-time All NBA First Team guy with a with a, a third team accomplishment in there as well. He's been, he's he's hoisted the the Larry Bird Eastern Conference MVP tro trophy at age twenty five. I mean, he's he's got the he's got the Game Seven All time NBA All time scoring record with fifty one in that epic performance against Philly back back at the crib. I mean, where where he's where he's, you know, pointing at the crib to, or pointing at the logos to telling people that this is his house. I mean, he's an Olympian. He's a Gatorade player of the year. He's won a state title. He's what he went to Duke. I mean, he was a number one number one player in the country according to, according to most most instances. It's the next step for him. Simply put, it's the next step for him. I mean, it's I mean, the media, they'll always, I mean, this, the media were all, they're also the same people that were saying he was, he wasn't athletic enough to play in the league. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, what yeah. are we talking about here? The media is always going to find some, some type of angle to, to find, to, 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 to try and um, poke holes at him. You know, they're going to think it that, bother. Do you think it bothers Jason that, that he's being covered this way? No, nah, it doesn't bother him, man. I mean, if anything, it fuels him, you know, because, at the end of the day, the media, they're going to try to do their job at, at um, you know, to the best of their, their ability, you know, and, and for, for, for where Jason's at, at his point in his career right now, they're going to say, okay, well, he's done a whole bunch. He hasn't run, won the chip, you know? I mean, okay. I mean, he's 25. I mean, he's, he's, he's ascending. He will win an NBA championship, you know, like that's not, like I, I, I 100% believe that. And then when he wins it, when he wins that title, they're going to say, "Oh, well, he he's only won one NBA title, and he hasn't had a Finals MVP." You know, the the NBA, the NBA media, um, 
has an has an unlimited amount of criticisms that they can throw at a player, you know. And and with that being said, it comes with the turf, the, the turf. And and Jason is is more than equipped to not only handle handle the, the criticisms, but exceed but exceed them. And that's what we're watching real time. And so with that being said, I mean, we just have to step back and look a little bit. Whenever you look at a guy who who I think he had 23 last night, 23, 6 and 5. And um, you know, we're talking about a couple, a couple threes going in, and and the narrative is completely different, you know, and said he's one for seven from three, and and that opens it up to him having a bad game, or or they pick apart um the the flow of his game, you know, where if he doesn't if he doesn't produce in all four quarters like this, um, then then he's not engaged and quote unquote engaged. Dude, come on, man. Like he, I mean, he, he's, he's got to, he's got to be a, a good teammate at some point, you know, he's got to facilitate, he's playing with a, a guy who's pretty daggone good in himself and, and Jalen Brown. And he's playing with other guys like Derek White, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, you know, we're not even talking about, you know, poor Zingas, you know, um, sometimes the media just assumes that there's, there's there there's an unlimited amount of basketballs out there. And, and you don't take into consideration that, He's got to be him, but he's also got to fit into what the Celtics need in order to hoist a, in a hoist a banner, and and not everybody can do that. Will you know? And, yeah. and you know, not everybody can do that. And, and you know, Greg, to your to your question, you know, whatever 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 nuances they can find in the box score, they're going to find it and they're going to try and poke at it. We're talking about a team that I believe is 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 nine and two in their playoff run right now. <laughs> Up to ten and two, yeah. Uh, yeah. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, ten, yeah, ten and two. So uh, let's and and albeit all the games haven't been pretty, right? And mm-hmm. and I think I think everybody knows that. But what are we talking about here? We're talking about a team that's <laughs> that's ten and two, and and um and and they're without a they're without a big cog in 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 Kristaps, you know. So yeah. it's like, come on. A lot man. of people don't like, like to mention that, right? They, they, uh, every, uh, it's only they, the other team with injuries, not us. Well, yeah. Well, it's convenient not to me- not to mention it, you know. And and so I would just say, pump the brakes. Like, let's have let's have perspective here, and understand that we're looking at one of the all time greats climbing that ladder to one of the most not- noticeable one one of the most noteworthy accomplishments of his career. And that's an NBA title. So let, let's just sit back and enjoy it <laughs> instead of so, just poking holes at it. So something I want to ask you here, Coach, is, you know, for Greg and I, we've now watched Jason Tatum very closely since he mm-hmm. got drafted by yes. the Celtics over, over these last seven years. And there's certain games where, you, where, you know, Greg and I can either text each other or if we're watching the game, either we kind of give each other a look or text like, all right, I think I think Tatum's cooking right now. I think, mm-hmm. you know, because he gets into these really, really hot zones. We even talked about this last night mm-hmm. where there's like, you know, you look at I think it was game one. He had like two different spurts of like, you know, 10 to 12 points in very short spans and because he's kind of you know you know you know dispersing the load if you will offensively around it happens in these short stints but i'm curious to know is there anything subtle that you pick up as someone that's known him since he was in middle school where you're watching a game and maybe there's something little that's that's maybe even imperceivable to somebody like greg or i but for someone that's known him since he's in middle school is there something that you see that you're like all right, this team better watch out. Jason's got it going, or he's locked in tonight. The the number one thing I think is is great for for Boston and Jason is when when he's very decisive and intentional about putting pressure on the rim. When when he's putting pressure on the rim, um, a lot of good happens. Not only, I mean, everybody in everybody in the country knows how gifted he is skill wise. Um, everybody knows that he can. He can shoot threes. He can he can go on this hot streak with with his ability to to kick in threes. Um, but what I think is 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 very noteworthy, and we saw a little bit of it uh, down the stretch in in game two yesterday, when when Jason catches in that middle third around the nail, and and the floor is appropriately spaced. Um, there's no one that can guard him. I mean, I I, I personally don't think there he he can. He is a he is a professional tough shot maker. He can get whatever shot he wants. He can make it, make a shot anywhere from anywhere on the court. But where most teams are helpless, especially when the matchups present itself, is when he catches in that middle third around that nail area, and he he makes his mind up. 
that he is going to go put pressure on the rim. You know, the, the other team is helpless. The, the other team is helpless because we saw a couple of times last night where he went to his patented fade. And, I mean, the, the best thing they can do is contest a foot below his release point. Um, or when he when he decides to, to you know, hit, hit him with a quick, you know, just a quick decisive move and and he, he – he, you'll see him. He'll either keep the ball, you know, on his hip, or he'll 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 keep it high on the drive to the basket, and he'll finish at the at the rack. Um, it's not like it's not like um, a team like like Indiana has a prominent shock or uh, a rim protector at the at the rim. Um, when when he's putting pressure on the rim, it it just it, it. I mean, no one can do anything with it. And then if they follow him, I mean, you're talking about a a very good free throw shooter going to the line, um, being able to take advantage of that too. And uh, someone who's all, uh, who's got the IQ to know, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm applying pressure. I'm getting success at the rim when they start loading up or when they start sending doubles, you know, he's a willing passer to, to, to hit guys around him um, that are, that are, that are, um, you know, more than capable of knocking down shots. And, and so, I think therein lies um, the indicator of when, 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 um, when, when he's in that mode. No, I mean, you might as well gas, you... gas up the jet, man. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting, right? So I, I, I haven't coached at the level that, that you've coached, but I, I've coached for a significant amount of years. I coached varsity here in Texas for about eight years. And, you know, as a coach in high school with Jason Tatum, what was it that you would have to say to him to like unlock that mindset of I'm going to be in attack mode? Or do you think that's just something that for whatever reason, some games he's more locked in to put rim pressure on? Well, can you speak to what it was like with Jason back as a high school player? And if you ever had to like do anything special to unlock that? Yeah, I think that they're, they're each level is different. Right. And so in high school, um, you know, Jason's one of those type of guys when the lights go on, like, the lights don't shake him, you know, and so we we've seen that in high school, we've seen that in at Duke, and obviously we we're, we've seen it countless times in, in the pros. And so um, the things in high school were just, um, you know, Jason is, is is a is a very good teammate, you know, and he cares about the performances of his teammate. He compare he he cares about the outcome of the team. Um, he's not a selfish guy, and and so. So with that being said, in high school, there were times where, you know, he would look to get other people involved and it was great. Um, but he also possessed the IQ to understand, OK, it's it's time where I got to put the team on my back and it's it, and we got to go. And and and, you know, any time that he did that, Shamanad benefited. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> I say that just because, um, you know, I, I, I would love to see him continue to do that for, for the Celtics, because there's times where, you know, and again, it's, it's about being a, a piece of a whole. Um, but, but he is the type of guy that when, 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 when it's crunch time or when you need a bucket, you got to go to him and it, he's got to, he's got to, he's got to be that guy for the Celtics, which, which he has been thus far. Yeah, Coach, I'm, I'm curious to ask you here. I know that you're also involved in, in Team USA basketball mm -hmm. for, I believe, the U17 age group. So you you see a lot of kids that have come through that have gone on to to then play, you know, in the NBA and in different facets, whether it's your your high school coaching at Chaminade or, or being part of Team USA. Is there anybody out there in the NBA or college right now that you think is reminiscent of a younger Jason Tatum or has similar skill sets to a Jason Tatum? Yeah, Will Greg, I'm, I'm biased. I, I'd say no. You know, <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, Honestly, sorry, that's man. a great answer for us um, to hear. We love hearing that. We yeah. don't want any more Jason Tatum. We have the Jason Tatum. We don't need yeah. a new Jason Tatum. Yeah, there's there's guys that that are that are going to be special. You know, like your Ace Bailey's, your Cooper Flags of the world. They're going to be your your Dylan Harpers. You know, those guys are going to be really special. They're going to be very good NBA basketball players, man. Um, you're, you're, and then you got guys that are going to surprise some people. Like I, I'm a big fan of, of Boogie Fland. You know what I mean? Like I think that that kid's special. He's a winner. Um, but but when we're talking about Jason Tatum, you're talking about you're talking about you know the one percent of the one percent. Like we're again. That's why circling back to your question about the media, um, let's just sit back and appreciate it. You know, like because because a guy like Jason doesn't come around. You know 
hardly ever, you know, and, and it's very similar to, to the, you know, the, the, the crit criticisms of, 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 of a LeBron. And it's like, dude, can we just, th he's, he's going to retire in the next five years. You know, can we just uh, appreciate what he's doing now? You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I just believe we're, we're doing the, we're, we're at the full, we're at the, the beginning stages um, with, with a Jason, you know, let's, let's just sit back and appreciate this guy for who he is. You know, like there's, there's not a comparison. There's, there's not a, a guy who's like him. Let's just, let's just take a deep dive into his journey and understand that it's going to be a good one. And, you know, let's just hope that when, when this kid retires, excuse me, I'm, I said kid, you know, <laughs> when this, when this, when this young man retires, um, that the, he, he not only will he have left a legacy behind that was, that's going to be something that young kids can, can shoot for. Um, but he's, he's left the game of basketball in a much better place than what it was before he got into it. And, and let's enjoy it, man. Cause it's, it's special. It's special. I love that mindset. I want to, I want to take you back to mm -hmm. 2015 or 2016, whenever you were coaching Jason, it's a big moment game on the line. You have to run a play for JT. What's the play that you're running back then? And then today, what's the play that you would run for JT to get his shot, to get to his spot? Yeah, so uh, I, the plays would be a little bit different just because in high school, they they, they would really load up against you. Um, and so not saying that it can't in the NBA, but spacing is a little bit different in the pros just because of, of defensive three seconds and whatnot. <clears throat> but – um, I just tell you, I just tell you that we in the playoffs, we ran a play to get Jason to catch an elbow catch and we would clear out the side and we ran it seven times in one game. And Jason either scored, scored or got to the free throw line, which and, and, and hit it, hit both, both free throws. Um, we ran it seven times just because he couldn't get stopped. He couldn't, I mean, they couldn't stop him. He was, he was a couple bounces away from the rim. Um, he was. He was in in an area where he was comfortable, where he could utilize his foot, you know, his his jab package, and and uh, free up that mid range jumper, um, and and then on top of that, he was in a position where he could see the entire court too, and so when when he put the ball on the floor, um, he could see where the help was coming from, he could see where the double team was coming from, and he can he can get get his teammates involved, and so so it was it was a simple play where where. Um, we would we'd have our uh, basically one of our our point guard Mikey Lewis would pass it to to a side, cut through screen for Jason to uh, to get an elbow catch, and then he would get it. He would uh, we'd pass the ball to Jason at the elbow. Then he would cut off. We'd have a guy in the dunker spot. We'd have a guy, uh, guy in the weak side corner catching. We'd have uh, um, we were we were that team right there was probably the best team we've ever we we ever will have. And, and so we had a, a, a big Will Gladson who was at the top of the key who could catch catch and shoot. Um, we had Tyler Cook in the dunker spot who, if they helped up, Jason just had to throw it up very similar to um, how the NBA's played to get, to, uh, today. And we had shooters on the weak side. And Jason was on an island to, 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 to be him. You know, the worst thing I could do was just overcoach the dude, you know. So just get him to a, a position where he could be great and, and then just, just watch him do what he does. Yeah, so you it's interesting you talk about how his spot on the floor was that elbow. You mentioned that a few times in our mm -hmm. conversation today. What do you make of Tatum's development in his game where it's become a little bit more perimeter perimeter oriented? And when the game's on the line, it seems like the Celtics don't necessarily try to get him to that elbow area mm -hmm. or that nail area. It's more like get the ball to Jason at the top of the key and get the hell out of the way, That's which right. is very, very NBA style of, of front right. time offense. Right. But is there a reason why, like in his development, that you think he's kind of gravitated more towards the perimeter versus getting to the nail? Yeah, I mean it's it's all about trajectory, right? In high school, um, everybody and their mom know. I mean, knew that if you watch Jason, that you're you're watching an NBA basketball player. And so, um, you know, it's about growth and development. And and for for Jason, he's no he's no um, he's no exception. And so what we're what we're watching is is just the the progression, you know. And so if he, and and you know, Greg, let me be clear, he was doing all of that on the perimeter for us too, you know. And so. <laughs> So I don't want I don't want I want to make sure I'm being very clear. He wasn't somebody that we were we were we were um, we could only utilize in certain areas. We could utilize them all over the place. And and so for us, it was just a matter of getting him a quick catch catch 
in a place where he could he could see double teams and tr- and in some instances triple teams, um, you know, and also read weird defenses like triangle and twos and and all this crazy stuff that you see in high school. Um, and so obviously you don't see those those type of situations at the next level. And so um, when you look at the uh, at, at the at the um, at the NBA level, uh, you know the the court is 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 is, you know, the defense is appropriately spaced, you know, in high school, they can run all that weird stuff against you. And so I think in some ways, the game gets a little bit more simple at the NBA level, because you have the best of the best, um, you know, playing and they're playing it the the right way, <clears throat> um, which is, which is, which blows my mind when, when I hear people say they, they, they can't watch NBA basketball, NBA basketball because of this, that, and the other. And I'm like, you don't know what you're looking at if you don't like watching NBA basketball. Um, because these are guys that when they're playing it the right way, which they do most of the time, they get a great shot every single time down. They take full advantage of the defense every single time down. Um, they're appropriately spaced every single time down. And and so um, with a guy like Jason, <clears throat> you know, being utilized in the perimeter, it's because – you know, it's because of the things that he can exploit uh, out of the, you know, against the defense every single time down. And so um, that's that's the reason why the, the Celtics are doing what they're doing. And and I think it's also the reason why, again, they're 10 and two right now, you know, contrary to what um, everybody's saying. So. Yeah, Coach, we uh, we appreciate your time today, man. It's been fun hanging out with you. Uh, I'm going to get you out of here with one last quick question here. Now, I want to make sure that people know that you were no slouch yourself when you were <laughs> playing back in the day. So I know that you're top 10 in single season, three-point field goal makes in D2. So I want to ask you, just straight up shooting, you versus Tatum, could you take them? Well, in, just in, shooting. That's all in, we're saying, Coach. In, in 20 – in 2024, no, I can't do it in 2024. <laughs> um, I would like to think I could do it in 2016, but you know, Will Greg, I'm probably I'm probably being honest, it's probably my pride getting the best of me by answering it like that. But <laughs> I, I will say I, I want I wanted to see if I, the competitive juices came out and you were like, Yeah, yeah I still yeah, got it. I, I mean, can still I, take him. <laughs> I, I, I would step out there, I would step out there and give him my best, man. But I, I think he's got me beat. <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate it, Coach. It was awesome having you here, man. We're excited to see uh, what comes of this run. The Celtics are now six wins away from potentially having that NBA championship that we talked about. So, Coach, appreciate you being here. For those of you listening here on either Twitter, YouTube, or if you guys are listening on the podcast via Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll play you out with some Black Sheep Optimist, and we will catch you guys later this postseason. Peace. <laughs>